One Health is not a new concept. Actually, uh, it is a very old concept as uh, what joins or is the relationship between animal health, human health, and all the environmental aspects uh, of our planet. So everything is connected. This is basically this debt. So uh, after the pandemics, the World Health Organization plus FAO and the World Organization of Animal Health and uh, also the environmental sectors of, um, of the United Nations, they form a quadripartite organization. So all four organizations form a quadripartite in order to work more specifically in one health. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me in our podcast studios this week is Dr. Janice Zanella. Dr. Zanella is a visiting scientist with the USDA based out of Ames, Iowa. Janice, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. If you would, why don't you give the audience a little introduction and your background? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Clayton. Yes, um, I'm a veterinarian. Um, I work in virology, and um, recently uh, I was appointed as a visiting scientist at the USDA in Ames, Iowa. I work also as a visiting scholar at uh, Iowa State University, and I'm a scientist from uh, the Brazilian Agricultural Research Corporation in Brazil, Embrapa. Janice, you're joining us today uh, to talk a little bit about One Health and veterinary medicine. And I know you've had the opportunity to participate in an expert panel on One Health and veterinary medicine uh, sponsored by the World Health Organization. You want to talk to us a little bit about uh, One Health, you know, in general, what is it? Uh, is it a new concept? How do we define it? And then ultimately, what does it mean to veterinarians to be a part of One Health going forward? Oh, yes. Um, uh, One Health is not a new concept. Actually, uh, it is a very old concept as uh, what joins or is the relationship between animal health, human health, and all the environmental aspects uh, of our planet. So everything is connected. This is basically this debt. So uh, after the pandemics, the World Health Organization plus FAO and the World Organization of Animal Health and uh, also the environmental sectors of, um, of the United Nations, they form a quadripartite organization. So all four organizations form a quadripartite in order to work more specifically in one health. Um, so a panel was created in 2001, and I was a part of that panel. I was the only representative of uh, my country in Brazil. So there were 26 experts. So the first part of this, um, the, the first term was from 2021 to 2023, and it was mostly to um, to find or to to design the science behind One Health, what had to be done. So regarding surveillance, what are the tools that are available in order to monitor or to study One Health, uh, to design the new concept. So, and then all these plans, uh, plan of action. So what are the countries going to do regarding One Health? So the second term now is more to implement. So how the countries are going to implement. So the profile of the experts now are more like social science, economists, policymakers, lawyers. So uh, it's more of this characteristic. Not much the scientific part uh, of One Health, but how to do it, how to, how all those, these sectors are going to work together, how, how those disciplines are going to work together. So this is about the, the, the panel. So regarding the role of um, 
as veterinarians in One Health? Well, I always say that One Health is not just zoonosis. One Health is much more than zoonosis. So that was something that I used to think when I thought about um, One Health. Well, the animal gets sick or gets infected by a wild animal, goes to the domestic production, and then is transmitted to the person through contact or food. No. So it's not just that. Uh, you have to think about all the other aspects. Um, first of all, so there are some diseases that people are not paying attention that are coming back. Some diseases that are not important, but today they are important. Um, so some uh, diseases transmitted by mo mosquitoes in some areas, like colder areas or countries that are now uh, being important. So some tropical diseases and some diseases that, like I said, uh, that are emerging or getting exposed expanded through climate change or migration or war or even globalization. So if you think about it, um, by 2050, so we're going to have um, over 10 billion people in this planet. People are going to eat. So for that, it's going to increase the production of food right? To produce more food, you need more water, you need more energy. So you need more animals, more protein. Uh, and most of these people are, uh, the, you know, those populations that are going to increase are from developing countries. So they're going to make more money. They're going to eat more protein. So the commerce is going to, you know, so... Why is, this is why I think our profession as the veterinarians, we have, uh, you know, many faces. So we can go and look at many aspects of um, not just animal production or animal diseases, but we also uh, have an interaction with public health. We also have an interaction with biomedical research. You see all the animal models, all the um, research, in, even in reproductive medicine, right? In diseases, in cancer, in vaccine, in viral diseases, for example. So there's also this interface with other professions. So we work with many other professions, right? Uh, uh, like I said, um, statisticians, uh, agronomists, and um, economists. So for uh, veterinary um, overseas, not just the animal, but also the tutor, the person, and the other species sometimes goes uh, to attend, to, you know, to have a call and go to the farm or, you know, and um, sees other species, other, you know, all the the relationship. So even today, like we're seeing, like some diseases, they're changing. Like uh, even influenza. Well, I have studied influenza. So and we never thought that um, cattle was going to get infected. You see all these problems, not just uh, with domestic, but also with pets. Pets are also very susceptible to avian influenza. So all these marine uh, animals, so not just birds, but, but also mammals. So this is something that uh, we have to address um, the risk factors for emergency of diseases and how we are going to get nutritious food, you know, safe food, um, not even talking about antimicrobials, that is also one important aspect of uh, One Health. So this is just to give an, uh, an overall uh, idea how, uh, how important is the veterinary medicine to auto this concept because um, of all this new thing that we don't really know how to to deal right and uh the pandemic came and gave us this um you know this lesson i guess so that we have to think about it yeah 
Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. You, know, you bring up the pandemic, Janice, um, and uh, it makes me mindful of the fact that uh, the health community has lost a lot of credibility with most people from the pandemic. Um, we couldn't make tests. We, we gave recommendations that went back and forth all the time. Um, veterinarians probably also get linked in to that loss of credibility, I have to imagine, right? Even though it's not, we, we, might, we might not like that, but the reality is to most normal people, we probably get lumped in together. What do veterinarians need to do, Janice, to make sure we are credible in this discussion on One Health topics going forward? What do we need to do to make sure that our voice is heard and that we are seen as scientifically credible and capable representers of animal health? Well, that's a very good question. I think that's always we have to think about science, right? And give the right message because sometimes, uh, you know, pandemics, they ever, you know, they... They're not. They're not new. You know, they've been um, happening in our humankind for you know many many years. So if you think about the Black Death, if you think about the Spanish flu, if you think about the smallpox, you know, and uh, all those diseases killed millions of people. So at that time, uh, there were very few resources. So, but then. Uh, Every time that a pandemic came, there was like um, many challenges, many uncertainties, and a lot of uh, people are scared, you know, people are scared. What's going to be like us? Well, when is things going to be over? Can I, can I have like in one year where I'm going to be? So am I going to die? You know, things like that. We, are we having the vaccine? Is the vaccine safe? So, and uh, well, what pandemics have taught us is that uh, if it wasn't because of the Spanish flu, for example, we didn't have the World Health Organization. So, you know what I mean? So what pandemic, they have taught us a lot, special, especially epidemiology, you know, how diseases happen, how it's transmitted, you know, things like that. What, what are the risks? So... What I say is that we have to think about the science behind it. You know, we have to think about the science, and uh, and sometimes uh, we don't know everything, right? We have to do and learn how these things are going to happen. One thing that we know that is that we are having more pandemics. We are having shorter intervals of time of pandemics because this is proven, but we don't know. Uh, which virus or a fungi or whatever is going to be the next agent. But um, what I think we have to think about, we have to look at in a more holistic type of thing and, you know, think about that things are going to happen, be prepared. And one thing that I also say that uh, this last pandemic taught us is to work together you know, share data, share and be transparent. Because, you know, just after, you know, things, uh, the sequence of the virus was shared, you know, the vaccine companies start to, you know, to work. And companies that we're, uh, comp they compete with each other, they start to work, work together. So I think that is, that was a good lesson. So I think that is, we, Maybe, I don't know, maybe that's what One Health tells us. You know, we are in the same, same planet. There is no plan B. You know, our planet B, we have to deal with what we have here and uh, use the resources that we have and, uh, right, work with the people that we have now. Collaborate with the people we have now to, to, to provide solutions to the problems that we have. I think that's very well said. And Janice, I thank you very much for coming on and sharing that message with our audience. It's a, 
It's our reality going forward, and it's what we have to embrace. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure, and I was very happy to be invited and uh, be part of this project. Thank you so much. Well, thanks to our audience, Janice. Um, we certainly couldn't do this if they didn't tune in to, to your episode and all the others that we put out. Um, to the audience, if you haven't checked out our website, please go to swinehealthblackbelt.com. Please subscribe to the podcast so that you can catch not only Janice's episode, but all the ones we put out every week. For Dr. Janice Zanella, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thank you so much for joining us and please have a great rest of your day. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.